Hey guys, today on the Home Winemaking Channel, I'm going to go over the basics of storing a wine for extended periods of time. Um, the first thing is, if you're thinking about storing it, maybe consider what kind of wine is it first. So, um, if it's a delicate white wine, like um, a Sauvignon Blanc, say, you might want to consider drinking that sooner rather than later. Um, the wines that have the, the fruit forward type tastes, um, that's only going to kind of go away over time and you're going to end up with kind of a, a bland wine that really was, isn't the way it was intended to be drank. Um, but if you have your bigger reds, um, your ones that are almost too intense to drink young, those are usually the ones that you actually want to age. And you might even want to age them up to say six to even ten years. Um, but older isn't necessarily better. So if it tastes great, maybe drink it like soon. So if you've aged it for seven years now, it tastes amazing. Um, you might want to think about drinking some of it because it could, could actually start to go downhill. Um, but if you did want to age a wine for periods of time like that, there, there's some things you definitely want to keep in mind to make sure that you don't ruin it by mistreating it. So um, the first thing is you want to keep the cork wet. These corks, especially, of course, the natural corks, um, can tend to dry out over time. So the easiest way to keep the cork wet is just to store the bottles on their side like this. Um, some of those new wine racks, they have, they make it so you put the bottle upside down and I don't really see any reason why that isn't a good thing for storing wine long term. Um, you also want to make sure that there's a reasonably stable temperature where you're storing your wine. So um, the reason for that is if your temperature fluctuates um, too wildly, so you know, say it's going from 50 degrees to 70 degrees back and forth, you've got it next to your furnace or something. Um, what it'll do is it'll expand and contract this fluid um, in here and it'll kind of pump oxygen or pump air in and out of here, which will basically really rapidly age that wine and um, oxidize that wine and make it go bad. So you want a steady temperature. You also want um, a reasonably cool temperature. Uh, they say 55 degrees is optimal, but 55 to low 60s is still pretty good. Um, so if you can get a reasonably steady temperature in that range, you're, you're sitting in good shape there. You're also going to want to keep the wine out of direct sunlight. Um, just kind of keep it in a shadier place if possible. Um, the light will just sort of break down the, the colors of the wine and uh, potentially some of the flavor compounds. So you don't want that to happen if you're you know aging it for a long period of time. Um, the other things, let's see. Um, oh, humidity. So. Uh, same old situation, you don't want to dry your corks out, so that's why you see a lot of people storing wine in their basement, because basements are usually a little bit more humid than the rest of the house. Um, optimal for wine storage is 60 to 70 percent, which might be a little bit unrealistic in your house, because that high humidity could be bad for other things in your house, but um, storing it in relatively high humidity is better than relatively low. So. Um, if you do those things, you're really, you've really got it pretty much covered. Um, if you don't have a wine rack like this, um, you could build things like these. They're really not that hard to build, and I'll show you in another video sooner or later. But um, you can go to your wine store, whether it's a winery or, or a local wine store, and you can get these boxes, which are just the 12 packs that wines come in, and they'd be happy to give them to you, I'm sure. Um, but this is kind of an easy, good way to stack the wines on their side. Um, and of course, you can usually find some pretty cheap little, you know, wine racks like that little guy. So you can store them on their side. Um, being that this is the home winemaking channel, I will mention a couple other things. Um, if you're making a wine um, for the purpose of storing it and you're not going to drink it within or you might want to save some for years to come. Um, don't forget to add your sulfites and add enough sulfites. So um, the lower your pH or the more acidic your wine is, the less sulfites it needs. Um, 
And as a rule of thumb, if you take your pH minus 3.0 times 10, that's the amount of parts per million of sulfites that you want to have in that wine to assure that it can um, have some aging potential without trying to turn itself into vinegar on you. And I think um, really we've covered just about all you would want to know about cellaring a wine. Um, so, you know, if you buy a wine at the store, like I said, just don't, uh, don't expect every wine out there to be meant to be aged or to age good. But if it's a really, really intense wine and you like the flavors, but you think they could, could maybe mellow out a little bit, um, throw it on the shelf and come back to it in a year or two. And uh, you might be pretty surprised with what you end up with.